How's it going, everybody? David Hedge here, House Hedge Gaming, and today I'm going to be unboxing a War of Whispers from Starling Games. This is the collector's edition, and I was able to win this through the Tabletop Tycoon 50s style diner. There was a mystery game that you were able to get. Some of them are like the Quacks of Quecklenburg, but this one is a collector's edition. Uh, really awesome that I was able to get this and I get to share it with you all. So let's open it up and see what's inside. And right off the bat, I do like the tone for this. You know, this is going to be a very serious war time driven game uh, just because the outlook here of the battlefield, you have the one lone warrior and just the artwork on this looks top notch. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what's inside. All right. So we have, it looks like the different, uh, the different armies that you can control. You have the Pale Raven, the Endless Serpent, the Cult of the Rat, and the Supplicant Spider. Uh, so each one of these here, let's take a look. Nothing on the back. Okay. So we have that. We have the Cult of the Rat. We have the Endless Serpent. Uh, these definitely look like the ninja, or not ninja, but like assassin type characters. And then we have the Pale Raven. All right, cool. We have a book for the Starling Games. Here, tells you about different ones, like, hey, it's Averdale. Uh, Alien Frontiers, The War of Whispers, of course, the one we're looking at now. And I like the, a lot of these games are like one to four players, one to five players, except for the one I turned to as soon as I mentioned it, which is King's Forge. Uh, looks great. Two to four player game. Still pretty cool. And Shadow Rift. All right. So we have the rule book. We have a little bit of an insert here telling you what you get inside of your game box. A little bit of a card clarification sheet here. Doesn't look like it's too heavy there. Uh, actually, let's bring that back. So we have Bear Empire, Eagle Empire, Horse Empire, Lion Empire, and Elephant Empire. All right, cool. Uh, take a look at the rule book here. Rule book looks like it's less than 20 pages. We got 15 pages in the book. And it looks like everything's real easy to go over. And I'll definitely show you how this goes when we do a playthrough. All right. Uh, we have the different, looks like different markers for the uh, groups that are in the game. Uh, the cardboard's real sturdy, too. Like, let's actually take that out. Uh, really easy to punch out, too. Because some of these things can be the biggest bum trying to punch these suckers out. Uh, but that is real sturdy cardboard. Thank you uh, for quality cardboard. Greatly appreciate it. All right. So, let us... Oh. Haha. <laughs> I'm a sucker for a collector coin. Let's see what this is here. It's shiny. I have to look at it first. And this is... All right, there we go. I was a sucker to get out, but look at that coin. I know this right now. If I play this game, or when I play this game with Star from Is A Star Alters, she will want to just hold this coin the entire time. She does that with Flamecraft and anything that has metal coins to it. So, uh... I know where this is going to end up. Uh, this may be like a first turn marker type deal. If not, this is just a, a, a cool thing to include with the game. And if that's the case, um, I know where it's going to be during gameplay. It'll be on her side. Or my wife's side, depending on who gets to it first. All right, let's take a look at the different pieces here. Uh, one thing I can... Not a big nitpick, but uh, they're not resealable bags. Um, which is a little bit of a... A downer because I really like it with these kind of components for these games to be able to reseal the bag, reuse it. Uh, but you know, we're going to open this up here and just take a look at the yellow ones here. These are your banners that you get to use on the board. And it's sturdy plastic, which is cool. Always good to have that there. So, with being able to use banners and all, this reminds me a lot of Risk uh, to a degree. And Risk was always one of those games that I was like, you know what, I could take it or leave it, but this one has a lot more of that. Uh, it's just like Risk was like the the great great grandfather of games like this, to where you're basically doing like board control uh, type stuff here. And then lit. Ooh, these are heavy. All right, let's take a look at these. It looks like these are different castles or turrets you can build. Very solid. And I like the way they look. 
they are really nice. Put that back in the bag here. And there's different colors here. You got blue, you got your gray, you got dark gray, you got light gray, you got white, you got red. Uh, for the banners, you have, looks like this one was, uh, looks like brown or purplish. Uh, then you got yellow, green, red, and blue. Uh, looks we have, uh, let's see what this is. Because in some games, All right, so the way this looks, some games this could be like just um, a summoning pit or a summoning uh, cauldron. Other games could be just a pyre. And, oh, there we go. All right, uh, you are now forgiven. Uh, I take back everything I just said about not having resealable bags. Uh, they, they were just hidden underneath uh, all that right there. So um, I take it back. I did not mean anything by it. I should have figured they should have been in there because it's the same people that make... Uh, Everdell. So, uh, again, my bad. All right. So, I'm going to put that back. Uh, we'll be opening all this stuff and putting it in there later. All right. And then it looks like we have huts. We got little huts here. Really nice looking. And then we have an hourglass. Uh, we <laughs> hey, look, everybody. I got time on my hands. Uh, this dad joke is provided by my father, <laughs> who has told me that joke many a time. Uh, but yeah, I like how that looks. Uh, I wonder what this is going to be for. I guess we'll find out when we do the demo uh, a little bit later on. So put that back. And now let's take a look at some of the cards. And I'm going to wait to open this up, because that is just a big board. I'll do that separate. All right, so we have these cards here. All right, so we have Warring Class, Peace Through Strength. So we have different uh, things for all the different um, empires that you get to go through here. So we got those. We have different treasures. Any empire. Okay, so these can be used for anything within, for any empire. So these are like wild cards almost. Uh, the one thing I would wish they could do with this even though they have the class symbols, the empire symbols up here that are English, uh, easily distinguishable, uh, maybe do something a little different artwork for each one. Uh, but then again, getting an artist can be a costly thing for some game companies. So use an artwork, which by the way, that is some really nice artwork on that. Uh, I can't complain about that at all. Like that's just a very small little nitpick. Then again, that's my small little nitpick was this and they still include it, so. All right, let's open this up here and see what is in this one. All right, so this we have different... Okay, they've got different ones here for the wolf class and all. So it looks like these are different uh, abilities you'll be able to use for these empires throughout the game. Uh, after an attack, you may... It looks like it's the same thing on each one of these, so... Okay, we're good on that. So it looks like these are different things. You can add banners, remove banners, uh, basically help control the area, uh, the board state in the game, which is pretty nice. So it looks like all these are the exact ones. So I'll just speed through those quick. But again, artwork, love it. Uh, it definitely, you can always tell a tone of a game through the artwork. Uh, like I said, when just looking at the, like, looking at the box here, the tone of the artwork uh, just sets the whole theme of the game, where games like uh, Everdell and all are very, uh, are more centered towards kid-friendly almost, family-friendly artwork. This one, you know it's going to be dealing with a lot of seriousness when it comes to war and board control and everything, so it, the, like, it really helps out when you have a game that sets the tone first and foremost when you take a look at the box and you know what you're getting yourself into. And I really like that for this. But now let me just cut, do a quick cut and I'll show you the board. Okay, this is a big board. <laughs> uh, I tried to fit as much as I could in the camera view here for you. Uh, but we have the spaces for each of the empires that will be involved throughout the game. And you have the different sectors uh, outlined by their different colors here. 
for each of those empires that you will be controlling throughout the game. Uh, but that is the board. I like how this looks. You have the differential, uh, you have the forest area. It looks like you got the uh, farming area type deal, like regular village. You got the plains and all. And then you have the Arctic region of this land, which I really like this for uh, five different distinct areas that you'll be fighting for in this game. And I cannot wait to show you how to play it later on. But that has been what you get when you get the War of Whispers, the collector's edition from Starling Games. And again, this is one of those games, it looks like it's an area control type game. If you're into that, definitely check this out. And I'll have a demo for it, learn to play later on down the line. So keep an eye out for that. So thank you all so much for checking out this video. If you like it, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And let everyone know that House Hedge Gaming is here for all of your gaming needs. So until next time, everyone, stay safe and take care, my friends.